There it is. And I officially started the webinar and the recording for the meeting. Okay. Ian and Sonia, was that your fancy work on that uh, work plan? Um, yeah, I think that's a rough cut of it. So we could probably go through that a little bit. We went through a, a few different iterations and different layouts. So, uh, and there, there are different uh, conversations. So I think it would be fun to have a discussion with everyone. Great. All right, so we'll get the meeting started now. We'll do a roll call. Hey, uh, Commissioner uh, Vice Chair Gordon. Present. Commissioner Taylor. Present. Commissioner Sen. Present. And Commissioner Klaus. Present. Thank you. Any agenda changes, requests, or deletions? No. Hey, any oral communications? And this has to do with the, if it's not on the agenda, any oral communications? We see anybody hand raised? Okay, thank you. And we have an approval of the minutes of the April 15th meeting. I'll approve. Okay, we get a second. A second. All right, thank you. Are there any additions, deletions, or changes to the minutes of the meeting? Okay, thank you. And a roll call. Uh, Commissioner Taylor? Yes. Vice Chair Gordon? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Sen? Yes. And Commissioner Klaus? Present. Thank you. All right, Elise, staff comments? Yes, yeah, so um, as always, we have some good eye candy for you today. Um, we've had quite a bit happen since the last time we met. So we'll start off with an update on the microgrants. So these are some of the microgrants that were uh, installed or took place since the last time the commission met. The Breathe With Me project, um, which took place over several days involving uh, Gunn High School students and, um, and community collaborators for the Breathe With Me project. Uh, I believe it is still on view um, from Bull Park. You can see it from Bull Park and it's on the backside of the playing fields. Um, to the right was a group of Gunn High School students um, created these uh, COVID-19 social distancing bots um, to be a friendly reminder on the campus to not sit so close to other people. So they were spaced on benches and other areas. Next. So the mural on the left was installed um, on University Avenue. And the project to the right um, is actually kicking off this evening in an hour. Um, and Robin Apple will be projecting her artwork outside of State of Mind Pizza on El Camino on uh, Thursdays through Sundays for a period of three weeks to a month. Uh, Martha Sacolario has uh, murals that are changing each week outside Rinconada Library and there have been a number of pop-up performances and those are available on the Palo Alto Instagram channel. And um, Marina Berlin's uh, sculpture has been installed in front of King Plaza. We've been having a lot of fun with seeing photos of people posing with her. Hopefully some of you had a chance to experience the wolves last week. They ran through Palo Alto five times. Um, after sunset, we got some good press for it, but, um, but it was a really fun project. I did get to experience one night on university. And the project to the right is a kids dance party um, featuring a number of different rappers and youth dancers. And that was just released today and is going out to schools tomorrow to really congratulate kids on coming through such a tough time in COVID and Zoom fatigue and congratulating them and making them feel good about going back to school and all the hard work that they've done. And then we have a number of projects that happen to coincide with Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. So Love Not Hate by the Harker Art Club will be installed on University Avenue um, adjacent to Rue Restaurant uh, very soon. 
Uh, Bubbles is a pop-up project, not to you know put too much of a pun on it, pop-up performances across Palo Alto that will begin next week. Um, and then we have a project that will be taking place in Mitchell Park. And so I think that's it for microgrants. And then uh, I have an update on the temporary murals at the public safety building. Elise, so, can I just interrupt you from, and ask you a question about the microgrants? Sure. Um, have any, um, as I say employees, but that's not the word I wanna use, I apologize. Um, any um, businesses um, asked about keeping any of the pieces up for as a permanent installation or is that, are they all just gonna be temporary and that's goodbye? <laughs> They're all temporary and expected to be removed by September 30th. Okay, so there's no interest from any of the um, businesses or anything or any of Not that we've heard okay. and with the limited budget, they're not, um, they're not intended to last very long. Okay. <laughs> Some of them are performance-based. Okay, but there would be, there could be possibilities if there was interest. Yes. Maybe. We would have to look into that. Their contracts okay. state that they have to be removed by September 30th. Uh, okay. Okay, just curious, thanks. So um, the next staff comment I have is temporary art at the public safety building. So we had 100 applicants who applied. The selection panel was made up of Aaron Kim, who's a Pali student uh, going off to art school. Um, Gloria Yu from Public Works, Jeff Davidson, who's the owner of the California Avenue, California Paint Company on Cal Ave, Vice Chair Gordon, uh, Stuart Robertson, who is a local artist, and they got together and ranked 65 artists online and convened Monday, as in three days ago, uh, to review the top ranked 29 artists. They selected eight artists for the two phases of the project. Um, as a quick reminder, the Public Art Commission approved funding for phase one of the project in February. Uh, staff will circle back to the Public Art Commission in the fall to recommend funding for the phase two of the project. The artists for phase one, and I think we have some eye candy because we've confirmed the first four, are Abby Mustafa, Olivia Luce Unger, Elizabeth Lada, who is a Palo Alto artist and is being featured in Palo Alto online right now for some of her work, and Jessica Eastburn. The other announcement I have is that our open call for pre-qualified pool of artists is extended to June 1st. So we've been reaching out to the resources and the, um, the list of artists that were provided by our uh, equity consultant, Elizabeth Foggy. And we're just continuing to try and get more applicants for that. And that's it for staff comments. I was muted, I'm sorry. <laughs> Any questions or comments uh, to Elise about staff comments? I have one about the microgrants. I think it's fantastic what's going on. There's been some good press, especially about the wolves. I think Sal Pizarro wrote about them in, in the Merck. Um, and I think it's really good community involvement. So I, I applaud you and for the microgrants and and at some point, maybe we can talk about continuing that on um, in the coming year at some point. We so, can. I also briefly just want to point out that on the City of Palo Alto's public art website, there is a link there where you can see all of the various micro grants that are up or have been up already. All right, great. Thank you. And any other comments or questions? All right, now we'll move on to the election of officers. And I believe there was um, a, a procedure sent out for the election of officers. And since this has to be any Zoom meeting, we have to have a roll call vote. I believe that we're going to text Elise with our vote. So at this point, um, are there any public comments? Uh, anybody from the public wish to speak on this matter? Any raised hands? Okay, thank you. Then we'll go to the election of officers. We're gonna open up first for the chair position and a brief description of the chair position. One, 
you uh, you consult with uh, Elise once a month about the agenda, and we do that. You do that the uh, the previous Monday from the meeting, or about a week and a half before the actual meeting date. Then the meeting agenda gets published on Friday. We'll get out sent out on Friday. And then there's other uh, meetings that uh, you can have with the lease, different things that come up, have to discuss. Um, one example was the BLM mural and, and how we went and, and did that. Uh, it's not a lot of time, but there are items that can come up that, that you would have to be involved with. So um, you in conjunction, uh, the chair in conjunction with the vice chair, uh, come up with the agenda each month for the meeting. So I think that's the main main thing that you would do. And then uh, as as needed, there are other things that you would need to do. So with that, I'm gonna open up the nomination for a chair position. And anybody wanna make a nomination for chair? Ian? Thanks, uh, Chair Miyagi. I'd like to nominate uh, Commissioner Taylor for the chair position. Thank you. Um, and I'd like to do so if I can uh, offer a couple of words of support right now. I think um, for some obvious reasons, her commitment and leadership during the development of the Black Lives and Mural. Um, to think of another specific example during the conversations we've all had around King's Plaza, I think she's offered both um, tactical guidance about specific questions, but also strategic <coughs> guidance in the process in general. Uh, and then finally, uh, after three years of working with her, I think that hopefully we've all come to recognize a tremendous demeanor as it comes to these meetings themselves. Um, she has independent and firm opinions, but I think she listens to all of us um, and is sometimes willing to change her mind, frequently willing to change her mind, but also willing to stand by her ideas in a way that one would hope of a leader. Uh, so I think all these qualities would make her an exceptional chair for the Palo Alto Public Art Commission. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ann. And uh, Nia, do you accept the nomination? I will, thank you. Thank you. Any other nominations? Um, I'll, I'd like to nominate Ben to continue on. Um, he has been a great leader through this. He's just been um, reappointed to the committee and he's wor been working on a few things that um, I'd like to see him continue with. Um, I don't know, Ben, are you interested in continuing in this role? Uh, yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you for the nomination. Okay, any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the nominations. And now if you would please text Elise with your vote and then Elise will, will make uh, the vote public. Okay, and Elise, if you would let us know when you get um, all the votes in. Okay, you're muted. There is a procedural snafu that we needed to um, have a motion to close the nomination. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I move that we close the nomination for chair of the Public Art Commission. Okay, thank you, Lauren. And you get a second on that. I second. Thank you, Senya. Okay, motion is now closed. Uh, and I, I believe everybody has voted by now. So at least if you have the vote. I do. So we have, um, Commissioner Taylor with three votes and, and uh, Chair Miyagi with two votes. So Commissioner Taylor is the chair. All right, congratulations. congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, I'm Nina. honored, thank you. Okay, now we're gonna vote up. We're going to open the nomination for vice chair. And we have nominations for that.
Okay, I nominate uh, Lauren for vice chair. I would be happy to support Nia. All right, thank you. Any other nominations? I would second Lauren's nomination. All right, thank you. Any other nominations for vice chair? We have a motion to close the nominations for vice chair. Seconded. All right, thank you. The motion of the nominations are now closed and I do we I guess we have to vote, but um, since there's only one nominee, I think, uh, but uh, let's go ahead and text our vote to, uh, to Elise and uh, we'll get this closed. And with unanimous support, Vice Chair Gordon remains Vice Chair Gordon. <laughs> Congratulations, Lauren. Sure, you and me will, will make a great team moving forward. We'll have fun together. Thank you. I'm honored to serve. Thanks. And Ben, thank you for all you have done as well. So thank you very much. We're all chairs and vice chairs in my book. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on to the next item, uh, item number two, which is 4256 El Camino Real. And Elise? Yes, just checking to make sure I'm not muted again. Um, so uh, this project came to the commission uh, for the initial review, November 15th, 2018. At that time, it was known as Hotel Catalina. At the time, they were evaluating artwork in the lobby, and there was quite a bit of discussion among the commissioners about accessibility of the lobby space. Even if it does meet the criteria of being accessible to the public 40 hours per week, um, how accessible might it seem to everyone. So now they are returning for their final review. We do have Randy Pop from the uh, applicant team here to give a presentation. And I do believe um, we have the proposed project artist, Colin Selig, joining us this evening as well. So with that, uh, I will turn it over to Randy for his presentation. Great, thank you very much. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for having us this evening. And I do have Colin here with us. He and I are gonna tag team this presentation just a little bit. Um, are you uh, bringing my slides up for me or did you want me to share? Wonderful, thank you. So uh, we can go ahead to the next slide. The, the project has been on quite a journey, I must say. And I, I appreciate all of your patience as it took time for us to get back here. Um, we have changed architects, we have changed interiors teams. And uh, over the course of all of that, we've completed the entitlement process with the Architecture Review Board. We feel that we have benefited greatly from that process. It was very collaborative and very helpful. Uh, the the renderings that I'm showing you still show the name analog, but actually the, the hotel is now titled the Art X Hotel. And art is a significant theme throughout the, the spaces and the rooms. And uh, the interior of the hotel will have a, a significant attention to quality materials, um, elegant design, and uh, lots and lots of interesting and unique elements of art. Uh, but the exterior of the hotel is what I want to focus on just for a moment with you. We have finished our entitlements with an approval for what is called a Nichi Ha siding. It's a cementitious material that has a wood-like look to it when you, uh, when you approach it. The, uh, the balconies have what are called uh, parasole panels, and those are metal cutout panels that will be uh, decorative and interesting. That is all fairly high up on the building, but down at the pedestrian level, there was quite a bit of attention uh, during the architecture review board process toward making something that would be beneficial to the pedestrian experience as people pass by the hotel, as people arrive at the hotel while they're waiting for their rideshare car, what have you. And so the renderings that we're showing here have a couple of different concepts that were reflected on them. On the right-hand side, we have underneath the analog sign, uh, what was intended to be some type of a 
fairly organic looking bench. And on the left-hand side, those curly cues that you're seeing were also intended to be some type of a seating element, but really it was just a concept. We hadn't really worked anything out. And in doing this, we really left behind the idea that we would be placing the artwork within the building, uh, that we would need people to come into the building to experience it. We, we heard what you all said. We, um, we heard what the Architecture Review Board said, and we have decided to really place our artwork out in the public way. Uh, if we could go to the next slide. So uh, Catherine Wong Wong, who is, um, she's trapped in Hong Kong right now. Uh, she often comes back and forth, but because of the pandemic, she's been, she's been at her home there. And she and I have been working closely with the rest of the project team to, to really evolve this process. And she was quite clear about what she was looking for. She wanted someone who was very creative, she wanted someone who had a really good reputation and a history of successful public art. And she wanted someone who would bring an aesthetic that was appropriate for the location. Uh, became aware of uh, Colin's work after being referred uh, by a, a local expert. And we did some background research. We're thrilled with what we found and what we saw of his work, uh, both in Palo Alto and in other areas. Um, what, Catherine said was that she felt it was inspiring, that I love that term, and that um, she really felt he could make a positive contribution. And so having evaluated a number of different locations, including the lobby and other spaces, we decided to do a combination of his benches and a uh, planter element that was complementary, um, symmetrically placed in front of the building. Uh, if we could go to the next slide, please. So this is a floor plan of the building. El Camino is at the bottom of the sheet and the, uh, the sort of blank area that's just above it, I don't, think I, have, I don't think I have the ability to point for you, but the blank area that's just off of El Camino is the driveway entrance. And the main lobby is just behind that. Down at the, uh, the lower edge of the sheet is the spot where the two benches will go. And so if you wanna to go to the next slide, we can look at that a little more closely. So what we're intending is that these two benches will be in front of the outdoor uh, cafe space. They will front on El Camino and they will sit in the public uh, sidewalk area and they will be an opportunity for people to rest. It will uh, provide a really beautiful and, and fun contrast to the character of the building. The planter and the planting that will be in it will provide shade and comfort for people who are sitting on those benches. Um, we really think of these as being uh, terrifically playful, uh, but at the same time, uh, really elegant. It's a, it's a, a lovely balance. Um, we love the fact that they're sustainably made, that they're comfortable, and that they will be very durable. Let's go to the next slide and we can talk about that a little bit. So, oh, I'm sorry. So uh, this is a quick elevation showing where those benches sit in front of the building, a little bit more of a concept drawing. Uh, go ahead. So, Maybe Colin, if you wanted to jump in here, I think this is a good moment for you to start to explain a little bit about your work, how you were inspired and uh, the bench that we've selected. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Randy. Well, um, and I appreciate the introduction of, about my work. I guess I'm sure people there are familiar with my seats along uh, University Ave at Emerson, Waverly and Bryant. Um, yeah, so my process, I can tell you about that. I have always been interested in our uh, repurposing and reusing materials, um, operating in sustainable fashion just as, uh, an, uh, has always been important to me. And uh, I guess about 15 years ago, we had an old propane tank on our property and my wife told me to get rid of it or do something with it. And uh, I made it into a bench, we needed seating. And uh, it just turned out so well that I realized I had, I had come across a new idea. Uh, and so since then, I've made uh, hundreds and hundreds of benches for uh, mainly public settings. And I start with regionally sourced scrap steel propane tanks, which I carefully dissect and then reassemble without any reshaping or reforming of the material. So this is uh, reusing versus recycling. Some people call it upcycling. Some people think that's a snobby term. I don't know. Um, and what I do is I rearrange these pieces and I have uh, developed uh, 
jigs that hold the seat and the backrest in a, in, a, in a right relative position. And I've researched different diameter tanks. Uh, in any case, I have now a series of design and a utility patent to protect my intellectual property and my process because my goal is while I am making, um, you know, several seats uh, a month at this rate, I would at some point like to produce this I produce some of these I designs in volume. So a lot of what I'm doing now is creating unique public art pieces that are also potentially prototypes. Uh, the tanks are so let's see. Um, the planter also would be made in a similar fashion. It's a, a tapered planter. It starts with a 30 inch round diameter at the top and then it tapers down uh, into a triangular uh, shape. So I think it'll look very, very elegant. Um, let's see, Randy, what else should I mention? Oh, let's go to the next slide. Right. But just in terms of dimension, I wanna make sure everyone understands these are, you know, it's, it's an eight foot long bench. It's got a varying height back. Uh, the planter itself, as Colin mentioned, is about 30 inches in diameter. Our intention is to have two of these symmetrically opposed on either side of the planter. Um, you know, as Colin points out in his, his materials here, they're, you know, they're terrifically comfortable. I've, I've enjoyed sitting them myself. Um, I love the durability of this material. The finish that he has designed is, is really terrifically capable, but also easy to repair if that's necessary. And as, as he mentioned with the, you know, the idea of the upcycling, these are, you know, they're terrifically uh, environmentally friendly. Let's go to the next slide. So this this talks a little bit about the finished process. Colin, do you want to uh, touch on this a little bit for us and how, yeah, I, how I have a, I, after, I, after I fabricate the, the the pieces in my studio here in Walnut Creek, I send them into Oakland for uh, powder coating. They're sandblasted. They're pre baked to get all the oils and out of the pores. Uh, then they're coated in a zinc rich epoxy primer which is a very weather resistant coating. And after that, they're coated in a super durable grade powder coat, super durable being a higher quality, harder powder coat than you would find on you know, typical uh, residential lawn furniture. So it's a much more durable finish. Um, and you know, my, my fear here is that these benches are going to outlast the building. We'll see, we'll see how we do with that. Uh, go ahead to the next slide. So again, I wanted to just uh, you know stop here, show you what you know what the building looks like a little bit, give you a, a quick little glimpse of what those benches will look like out in front of the space. Uh, again, just reflecting back on our architecture review board process, and uh, specifically to some of the comments that were uh, directed by Win Firth, we really were obligated to provide some type of a a place for people to rest outside of our building, a place to sit that would be comfortable, that they could uh, stop as they're moving along El Camino. And uh, solving that obligation through Collins benches, he just feels like such a, a terrific way to approach providing something that is highly visible in the community, will add a little bit of character along El Camino. Uh, you know, I think about the, the the rhythm of that street and this, you know, the idea of the Grand Boulevard and having a moment like this, you know, a little, a little dot of color and something that is uh, so playful really, I think adds uh, a tremendous benefit to this area of El Camino. So with that, I think we can finish our presentation. Of course, Colin and I are available if you have any questions. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for that presentation. Uh, first of all, are there any public comments on this project? Okay, seeing none, uh, we'll go to commissioner comments or questions. Any comments or questions? Yes, I will chime in. Arsenia, you can go ahead first and then I can chime in. Yeah, I actually had a question about the colors uh, because uh, I think one of the distinguishing features uh, of these uh, benches are that um, their, their colors are very noticeable. So I was wondering what the color selection will be. 
So that, that last image that I had up on the screen with the yellow, that is what we were uh, proposing we would do. I actually sent out uh, some images of these benches to our project team. And uh, actually a number of people sent me back a note saying, oh, I really hope you do it in yellow. And so we, uh, we decided that that was a, a good enough voting system and uh, have decided on the, the yellow that is represented in that rendering. Would you like to see that again? Should we bring yeah, that back to up be more specific, you, I'm sorry, get ready, go ahead. No, go ahead, Colin. Oh, I was just gonna say, if you wanna Google the yellow, the color we had sele selected is RAL1003. That's it. So um, the advantage of Googling an RAL color is you see it uh, on different objects in different light. And so, uh, so even get a sense if you, uh, look at a series of, of objects that are that color uh, of what the color would be like. Hey, okay, thank you. Any other questions, uh, Mia? Yeah, Chad, um, I was also going to have asked the same question about color. Um, first of all, though, thank you um, for this presentation. I'm excited. Um, but Colin, I wanted to just confirm um, the shape or design of the benches. Are they what's in the um, the photograph or image that you shared? Is the same design? Are you going to use, or is it going to be altered at any time? And also, I don't think it's the same as anyone that's in our current collection. But are there any resemble? I know they're similar, uh, but I was yeah, hoping right. you can no. touch. Right. Okay. Good. So, um, yeah, I was going to image that shows the dimensions. It's that blue design that Randy showed. So it would be that exact design, I believe, even to that proportion. And you're right, there are no other designs like that in your collection right now. Right now you have a couple of, I would call, say Victorian inspired designs that are those um, hemi asymmetric designs. Um, those have much more bulbous, these are the ones outside Keen. Um, those ones are much more bulbous in, uh, in terms of the ends. These, these designs proposed for, for this site are also asymmetric um, but they're they're a little sleeker and more modern um, because of the shapes of their ends. Um, so and yes, yeah, so you, and you don't have any other. You have I think there's and there's two mid-century pieces. There's two Vic, and maybe three Victorian inspired pieces. So this this would be a a, a new a new set uh, a new design for the city. And I like the planters. I think that's really neat. Thanks. Thank you, um, Lauren. Yeah, I was just going to comment on the planter too. Um, we don't have one of those in our collection, so that's really cool. And I think the bench is um, separated by the planter is nice. It's a resting spot, but people are kind of moving through. So um, it's going to be very nice. I, I'm looking forward to that. When is the building going to be completed? So we're, we're working our way through the building permit process right now. Um, we don't have our building permit issued. We do have a demolition permit for the existing building. And so we're just making kind of final arrangements for that process and hoping to demolish the building in short order and then start our construction process shortly after that. I think uh, we're all anticipating an approximately 18 month time frame for construction somewhere in that neighborhood. And so about, a, about just about two years from now, a year and a half from now, it should be complete. Great, that'll be wonderful. And Colin, um, I love your website. There's so many great things on it now. So thank you for being so creative and sharing your art with us. Well, thank you, Lauren. I, I appreciate that very much. Anybody else, uh, Ian? Thanks, Ben. Uh, and thanks, Colin. I've long admired the, the pieces that are uh, in the collection now. Um, and Randy, I, I like the vision um, of a return to the days of a Grand Boulevard on El Camino, uh, if it's possible. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, is, I, I was just looking at the, the attachment really quickly, actually, and, uh, and I may have missed it just in the brief. Uh, is this a um, public art and private development? That's what I, I just guessed as much, and I'm sorry if I missed it in the attachment itself. I, I just said this is going to be a tired point um, to my fellow commissioners, but I raise it as a question. Um, the benches are going to be alongside a, a hotel and outside of a cafe. Um, and I wonder if thought has been given to, and I, I recognize the limitations and the difficulties of this and the ones that I don't, I'm not aware of too that exist. Um, but 
what has there been any thought given to the question of whether the benches will seem public which is to say that they're going to be um very appealing pieces of art that sit outside um a hotel that the city's it's great news for the city but um that also probably will at times uh, have uh, be exclusive or elite um and so i wonder if there's any thought that's been given to that if there's a design answer if there's a signage answer or or perhaps there isn't an answer but i'd just be curious to know yeah so ian i can tackle that if you like um you know i i think this is a difficult question and i appreciate your thought about that uh you know obviously we have to do something that's on our property right that's the obligation here and so it's always a little tricky to figure out how to share that I was actually very pleased when we decided to move away from having the art inside the lobby and push it out to the front of the building, right? I think that that, that was a, a good move. And I think it's a gesture that really does represent a goal of trying to share this. Um, I, you know, I don't have a uh, strong sense of this being occupied really regularly by hotel guests. I think that there, you know, there will be a likelihood that people will use this when they're waiting for an Uber or a Lyft to show up, something like that. But, you know, the, the hotel has amenities on its interior. And I think that most of the people who are using the hotel will choose to sit inside rather than sitting out on El Camino. You know, there are, there are only a couple of places along El Camino that I think are really pleasant to just sit and hang out. Uh, you know, Baroni's Cafe, you know, there, there are places like that. But the you know, the, the value of this bench from my perspective is really that if someone is walking along, you know, they're moving to the next bus stop, they're, you know, they're out for a walk and they want to sit down and, and just take a load off for a minute, this would be a fun place to do that. And I think that part of why we have two benches and the planter in the middle is to create enough space that multiple people will feel comfortable sitting, even if someone else is sitting there. So it doesn't feel like it is you know, somebody's already taken the spot and they can't sit down and share it. Um, you know, I, I don't know how else to answer it besides that. It's, it's on private property. And so it is what it is. But I think that, you know, the way we've organized this will hopefully encourage anyone to sit there. And there's also going to be a plaque, right, Randy? So that there will be some indication um, and maybe... Yeah, uh, let, actually, Elise, if you don't mind jumping in and just describing how that works, I, I, I'll uh, say honestly, I don't quite know what the, the methodology is behind that. Sure, I'm happy to. So um, the uh, we have a standardized plaque that uh, goes with all the public art and private development projects so that hopefully it is recognizable. It does say that it's part of the city of Palo Alto's public art and private development program. Um, the location of the plaque uh, as you may have seen in one of uh, the renderings by the applicant, is, is right there next to the benches. So it would be readily uh, recognizable to anyone who may have come across one of these before, but it'll also mention that it's a city of Palo Alto uh, program. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I just the plaque has come up before, um, and so I would just say that it, well, at times the plaque, when it's buried inside, uh, isn't a solution uh, to the problem we face. Uh, I think Randy and at least your points that there is a plaque, but also the outside instead of inside with the plaque at a very visible location, and even the, the plant design as a separate space that allows multiple people to uh, take it. Uh, all of those are, are really, I think, helpful answers in the in the move towards sort of this sort of dynamic that's impossible to solve perfectly, as you say, Randy. So thanks very much. Anybody else? Uh, I just, um, just there? Oh. Yeah, I mean, it's budget season, so I've got dollars and cents on my mind. Um, how much are these benches? I was just gonna comment that you fell well within your budget of 1%. And so I, I'm assuming the in lieu funds will the remainder, the difference will come to us, but please answer. Yeah, uh, just, just so quickly, um, I, I think that Elise and I have a little bit of homework to do in terms of what the project valuation is. We just, because we just submitted for building permit and got updated information from uh, the building, the, the um, development center staff, it looks like our, uh, our project valuation is now $9.82 million. Um, we had an early estimate that was quite a bit higher, but uh, that's that's where this falls. And so, uh, the one percent budget is you know it's roughly 
$98,000. And I think that um, between Colin's work and some of the coordination effort around it, uh, we will have some funds left over and our intention is to pay whatever remains that is unused into the annuity. Okay, thank you. Um, I wanna thank both Randy and Colin for, for presenting tonight, thank you very much. And I wanna echo Lauren's comment about having these in the collection. I think it's a wonderful addition to the collection, uh, very colorful. And uh, one question I have, is there any shade in the area around the benches? If people were to sit, um, on those benches, are there any shade uh, on the benches? Great question. Uh, uh, so again, part of why um, Colin and I have arranged this around a planter is to create some shade. We'll, we'll put a tree in there that will develop right. some shade directly over this. And then just in front and you know, what everybody thinks is south on El Camino, literally just almost in front of the the southern bench is a fairly large street tree. And so there's actually quite a bit of shade in this particular area, depending on the time of day and the angle of the sun, of course, but uh, there, there's a good opportunity to have a, have a nice rest in the shade here. All right, good. All right. And you made a, a good point that I was just curious actually with all of the benches, are they, um, I, don't, I don't know if heat resistant really is the question, but if, um, if it's hot, if you sit on any of those benches, Will anything happen to you or will any, I, I have to admit, I've never thought about that because they're usually in the shade, so. Right, right. Yeah. Well, of course. And I'm, I'm obviously very familiar with our, our climate here in the Bay. It, it, a lot depends on color. That's a major factor. So a dark colored bench, like a dark red bench in full sun uh, on a 95 plus degree diggay will get a little bit hot. I mean, just like any metal object out there like that. Um, but if you have a lighter color, like in this case, it's gonna be a yellow, we, um, and you have um, any kind of partial shade, it's gonna, I, I don't think it's, they're ever gonna to get to the point in this location where they're gonna be uncomfortable to, uh, to sit on. I mean, part of why I was attracted to the yellow is that it will get, it will get less hot than, uh, than a you know, the red bench would get. I was uh, you know, pleased when everybody was drawn to that, and part of that was because I was concerned about the the metal seat getting warm. Yeah, the sizzle factor. Uh, nice factor, right? Hey, any other comments or questions? All right, can I have a motion on this item, please? I'll motion to approve the benches. Thank you. I have a second. Second. Okay, Lauren seconds. Thank you very much. I'm going to call the question and roll call vote. Uh, Commissioner Taylor? I agree. All right, approve. Vice approve Chair. to agree. <laughs> Vice Chair Gordon? Yes, I approve. Commissioner Klaus? Yes. And Commissioner Sen? Aye. And I vote yes. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you for both of you being here. Congratulations on the project. We really look forward to them, uh, these benches being added to the collection. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you all for your consideration you. and appreciate all the great work you're doing for our city. Thank you Thank very much. You. Thank you. Good evening. All right, let's move on to the next item. It's a non-action item. Uh, Commissioner Handbook adopted by the City Council. And this is a review and discussion of the Public Art Commission annual work plan and how the 2021 adapted uh, PAC priorities should be shared with city council in the new format. And Elise? Um, I think there's been a lot of discussion back and forth with, um, with Commissioner Shen and uh, Commissioner Klaus about the format it should take. Um, so we ended up taking that feedback and some of the feedback from the last meeting with the commission and made a first shot at it. And um, I turn it over to the commissioners to discuss. It's really intended to be your generated document. Hey, thank you. So Ian and uh, Senya. Hi, 
Um, so um, the I think the the green part, the light green part, is um, basically states our um, charter as a commission. Um, and the orange part, I think we have three approved priorities. Um, and so we highlighted them in orange and underneath every one of the approved priorities, the idea was to identify and list um, projects that would fit nicely under those priorities. Um, and I had originally um, um, prepare a table that's slightly different where uh, under every one of the priorities for every one of the projects, we would identify the name of the project, uh, you know, name of the uh, artist, picture, uh, like a, a visual representation of the project and maybe like duration and then maybe potential benefits to it. Uh, and rather than having that in uh, broken down into grid form, I think um, Elise just put that all in one box text. Um, so, so I think that shows well. Uh, question will be what are to have all of these different projects in one box without visual uh, or with visual? I think, uh, thanks, Inya. And, and just a, um, a further sort of explanation and uh, an open question. Um, an explanation of the priorities. I think it's worth reaffirming that these priorities were agreed upon um, at the beginning of the year. And so we pursued them, but also the degree to which they align with priorities that, that the Public Art Commission has been tasked by the city council with. Um, and so I think part of the important structure of this document is to affirm not only that we're delivering on our own priorities, but also that we've importantly aligned with the priorities of the city itself and its elected officials and leadership. Um, uh, of course, the, the third priority is to affirm the, the value of public art itself and that uh, veers slightly outside of that charge, perhaps with the first two couldn't be more in line with the charges we've received. Um, and so I, I think that's just worth reiterating that. A second open question, I think Sydney was at this and, and we just, we struggle with this a little bit, is of course um, a lot, uh, the, our lift micro grants could be an easy example as we've seen some examples that are coming online and that previously have some sort of multiple priorities. Uh, and so how to reflect actually what a piece of art does in terms of delivering on a priority is of course quite a difficult question, um, particularly when you're having to do it on a two dimensional piece of paper in a grid. Um, but, but I think one of the nice things about so much of the work that has been developed over the past 12 months, in fact, and that is going to continue to be developed more importantly, um, is that it serves efficiently multiple goals. Uh, and uh, um, maybe we don't capture that here, maybe we do. I think that's an open question, but I think it's something we should strive to do probably. Elise, is it possible for you to share with everyone uh, the grid chart I prepared uh, so that people can understand um, how we were trying to identify, um, you know, different sets of information? And then we can decide whether or not those boxes stay. Um, you know, my, my concern is this, um, you know, this is in lieu of our annual meeting or joint session with the city council. And I was reminded that, you know, usually when we attend our meeting with the city council, we have a presentation. And being that uh, we're the Public Arts Commission, our presentation usually has some eye candy. Uh, and that with the, um, you know, the, the verbal representation, I think it, you know, allows people uh, to move through the material rather easily. Uh, my concern would be to present a chart like this. Um, and I think this is much simpler than the original chart we started with, um, you know, without visual cues and kind of breaking down the items, it may be difficult to follow. Hey, thank you, Ian and Sinya. And uh, Sinya, I agree with you about uh, having some sort of a visual representation. So one of the questions I would have is, is it possible to attach um, photos or images to this report? 
Um, and that's something I'm going to throw to the mayor, Mr. Mayor. Um, if we could get a little feedback on on the template, I think the template itself that we were given raised some questions in itself um, and how to fill it out. And then uh, one of the questions we had internally was, as uh, Commissioner Sen mentioned about images and if we could attach images to the report, because I think that, especially with public art, it would just add that much more to the to yeah. our uh, plan. For sure. So again, this is the first year we're trying this. so. I think everybody can play with the template and the format. I do think maybe um, those large text descriptions, if they had bullet points, I mean, you do have some dates in there. And as I read it, I think getting a sense of the timeline over the year, and this is really, I guess, going into 2022, I think would just help council because we're going to get a bunch of these work plans from every commission. And it'd be great to kind of see kind of a flow of the year. And then, told, you know, this is art we're talking about. So I think images make a lot of sense. Um, so uh, you guys can play with this. You can kind of do what you want. But again, I think just making it a little more digestible, maybe with some more white space in there might help. Do we need to include financial information as well? Or okay. I know. I don't know. I don't Oh, uh, Elise, yeah. okay. actually, um, didn't I send one last version? I think this was my first attempt, which I thought, you know, th this is not, I don't think it's helpful, but um, but there was one one more version where I kind of gave the, um, the outline and I had attached um, an Excel. So I think we are, we're trying to pull that one up. I see, I think, Nadia, it's the one tab to the right, maybe. Uh, no, no it, it's not okay, this I attachment. can share it. There was another attachment, yeah. Yeah, no, no this is I not the attachment. This was version one and mine was version two. And I think there was one last version that we had shared. And it was um, in an email that I forwarded to you with, sort of outline of what I thought would be helpful to share. Can you see that? Not this one. So uh, here is the copy. Let me see if I can it's not forward it to you. Here we go. That's it, that's it. So the way I was kind of thinking was, um, you know, we'll have, we'll list the, the priorities, right? So, so you'll see the priorities were in yellow. And I mean, in orange, so priority one, priority two, priority three, which is exactly what we have um, outlined. You know, we put the text of the priorities and then underneath the text of the priorities, I thought we would break down um, each of the projects that are relevant. So we would identify information germane to the, uh, to the project and maybe in addition to project name, you know, the project image, um, you know, Additional information, maybe we have uh, one more field that says additional benefits realized or something like that. I think that was one of the asked in the original template from the council. Yeah, if you're able to do this, I think it's great. If you don't, you know, have all the information for all of the yeah. projects, I think that's fine too, particularly as it goes further out. Um, Would it be better to have have it broken down this way, like project by project, rather than like, let's say having all four projects in one box. Yeah, I, mean, I think it's up to you guys on the formatting. Okay. Again, this could be more readable, mm -hmm. but um, I'll leave it up to you guys. Okay. So yeah, and Ian, thank you so much for distilling this. I remember going through the handbook and seeing the work plan and wondering how we were going to take this document that we created at our, um, at our retreat and, and fit it into this. So it sounds like you guys have done a lot of um, brainstorming and um, it looks like it's well on its way. So thank you for doing this. Yeah, a lot of this was actually uh, Elise's guidance because I think he, she kind of helped us think through the first principles of what we were um, trying to present to the city council. You know, what I, I think the, the original template from the council is 
um, contains a bunch of relevant questions to help us try to answer and present information that may be relevant for the city. Um, and, and so we thought that the cleanest way to lay it out is first state uh, the commission's mandate. Right. And then list the, um, you know, the um, priorities that have been identified and then list all the examples of relevant projects under each priority. And then I think uh, maybe in addition to the information that we have identify their project name, you know, uh, cost. I mean, I don't know if cost is relevant, but whatever information, it may be helpful to add one more piece of information, which is what additional benefit this project would yield. Uh, would it be, you know, a, a additional uh, touch points of additional uh, priorities or whatnot, but that, that may be one last thing. Like Ian said, certain projects cover more than just one priority, right? Exactly. So you're getting yeah. multiple ben benefits from yeah. just a single project. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I, that's one of the, in fact, we could just put a lot of the projects in every priority. I wonder if I could just ask the mayor for a little further guidance, since it's, I know it's the first time that we've all done this and it's the first time they've, uh, any good um, work plan for a future year will, of course, uh, implicitly or explicitly justify why the work is being done, and thus the importance of making the priorities clear. Um, but I wonder, it, it, for you all who are digesting it, and you in particular, who's the representative to this commission, is it more important um, that it sort of is an argument for why we're doing the work, or just that you can track the work over the course of a year, and it's quickly digestible, and you can keep track of it? Uh, probably both, but if you were thinking yeah. about how you want to read it? I think, uh, yeah, I think probably both. And, um, you know, I, I guess the one thing I've been trying to think about here is you, you have kind of these projects. Are there any, any goals or any priorities in the work plan just around the process of the commission itself? Like um, maybe there isn't, but some of the other commissions, um, you know, are looking at like their scope or, you know, how they function, that kind of, that kind of thing. Um, but uh, again, I, I think, I think what you guys did was good. I think kind of just laying out the priorities, how they mapped the council priorities, that was excellent. And then kind of that next level down, if you do have projects and timelines, you kind of get both and you kind of see a flow for the year. If there is any particular touch point between something that council's doing and something you're doing, I think it'd be good for council members to mentally know, you know, that's gonna be coming in October or, what, or whatever. One thing I would like to also suggest that we include is some information about our Percent for Art program, because we've done, we've had quite a few projects um, that have come to fruition. And I think given the, the state of the economy, there will be more. <laughs> I definitely yes. see a lot more construction, so maybe in, including that, which I think is a priority too for the city council. <laughs> right, so th those are just like ongoing things. Like maybe there's a catch-all category of like percent, percent for art and other projects that may come up um, that overlap with other commissions. I mean, you guys have this work plan, but don't other things sometimes pop up? Yeah. Or, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like the BLM mural. Wow, a good example of that. Things do uh, pop up. <laughs> so could we do, could we hypothetically then do go back to the PowerPoint idea, kind of like what we've used in the past, but then add like more concrete bullet points? Is that, because we are the art commission. <laughs> well, that, that's the maybe. question that I, I really have for the mayor. Should mm -hmm. we follow a basic format for, um, our work plan, because I'm sure you don't want to get nine different formats and you have to kind of sift through each one of those to figure out what's happening. If you have a basic format of how things are reported, it would make it easier for you and the council members to digest the information. So I know there was that one format that was put out for the plan and should everybody try to kind of follow that, but maybe deviate a little bit to, to fill what our needs are? Yeah. Elise, do you want to share the original format? So, I don't know, maybe Elise, do you know, or are the other commissions trying to stick to one format? Yeah, the, I think um, this was the original format, and we didn't know how to, what to make of it. 
So much of it wasn't relevant to yeah. question. Right. Yeah. So much of it wasn't relevant. Um, you know, commissions have taken it different ways. So I know like Parks and Recreation Commission, they had various subcommittees draft theirs. And then when they met, they worked together to merge it into one document. Um, HRC, the chair and the vice chair uh, drafted it together and then it came back as a body. Um, so I, I think- It, I it think could be a PowerPoint. It's, we're not specifying what form, form it comes back in, are we? Um, I, I just think that the template, um, people were trying to find the template, but it was hard, um, as I mentioned, the commissioners, uh, Klaus and Shen, to put a, a square peg in a round hole. If it doesn't fit, let's not use it. Yeah, I, I think ultimately, you know, we're going to get a report. Council's going to get a report. So it almost, I don't think council's going to care if it's a PowerPoint or a spreadsheet. Okay. So if it's a PowerPoint, Elise, can you share an example of what we did last year uh, in the uh, in light, you know, in person meeting? So because that's what we did in person, um, but you know, obviously, there's a there's a in person voice over over the presentation, but it was much more visual. Um, and I think we voice over the details of the project. That's what we did last year. The other thing that the PowerPoint offered with the joint meeting was that um, there was an opportunity to show accomplishment, accomplishments from the previous year, current and ongoing initiatives, and what's up next, um, which is a little different than the work plan, which my understanding is intended to be forward. What you know, what's current and going on for the next year? Yeah, I would say the work plan is not the joint meeting presentation. That that's a different thing. Okay. Okay. And you know, what I got from that meeting we had, uh, you had with the different commission and board chairs, where there was a wide range of opinions about the work plan. And some people didn't even know what a work plan was and how to, to come up with one. Um, you know, I, I think that was a problem. And I, and I think that this commission, like I said, that at our yearly retreat, we would come up with our work plan for the coming year, and that's basically what we've uh, we're forwarding on to the to the council. Um, so I, I think in that way, you know, we're um, we're ahead of some of the other commissions on a work plan. I think you guys are. I think you guys are are doing fine. You got three priorities. I mean, some of them, some commissions were just generating really long lists and. Yeah. It was almost like they didn't have any priorities because they had so many things. So, yeah. I don't One other to... question, Tom, I had is will there be follow up if needed? Like, will if the council has questions, uh, like you'll follow up with us or what have you? So, if they needed more. Yeah, I think the intent. Uh, yeah, exactly. I think that's why we want these. And um, I think they'll be on consent. But, you know, if we saw a commission had 20 priorities and they seem to be off in left field. It could be pulled from consent and council could yep. discuss it. And yes, but I think generally it's going to be more information than anything. We just make sure we're, we're all aligned. And like Ben mentioned, we had our first meeting of basically all the chairs of all the boards and commissions. Um, I'd like to keep that going. I think it was useful. So this is what we did last year. And this is the format that we follow previously. We we'll gave location. Right, this is more for the joint meeting, right? Or yeah. not really a work plan, that's-, that's Okay. What so you will prefer, so, so your recommendation is um, the, the, the information that Elise, the first format that Elise presented, um, which outline and track projects under each identify priorities, probably the way to go, but that in combination with some visual cues uh, for yeah. each project will clearly outline. Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. So one question, um, will the joint meetings continue? Or are they 
off to the side now and the work plan submitted to the council will take the place of those joint meetings. Uh, no, I think we'll still have them. Um, I think we were trying to do it like every other year or something, right? Like you may not, we can't get to all the commissions every year. Right. Okay. Hey, any other comments or questions on this, uh, the work plan and, and uh, Senya and Ian, thank you very much for your work on this. I had one thing, I forget if I mentioned to, to you guys before, and I don't know if it rises to the level of the work plan, but I've been working with Neighbors Abroad quite a bit, the Sister Cities program. And one of the things that came up was the sign on King's Pl King Plaza mm -hmm. and potentially replacing it with something more easily updatable. Um, I, don't, I think we don't have our latest sister city on there yet. And um, so it may be something the art commission wants to take on rather than a sign, you know, with arrows and things, maybe it could be a projection ah. or something oh. more dynamic. Well, that could be part of the uh, part of the, the art public art project for King Plaza that uh, that's being that's going to be installed. That's a good suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. And Tom, just since you mentioned it, are there any removal of sister cities or always additions? I don't think we've ever removed them. Some of them are not as active. Okay. Um, but I, I went to the Midwest and met with several cities, and we're talking about a potentially a domestic sister city and and again i don't think that the young poo and china is on there yet so and uh, that's helpful yeah and i think other cities have done this but maybe uh, again it's more of a projection or something easier to to change yeah then those arrows that point uh, in a certain direction and and have the distance to the, right. to the city on it yeah. I'm still a very firm believer that there should be a public art exchange between South Bend and Palo Alto that tracks the movement of the football game every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to come back to the commission and propose that. Yeah. I know there be a lot of people. I didn't get to South Bend, but I was in Bloomington. <laughs> well, before that, Ian, we might need to do a King Plaza master plan. <laughs> Okay, any other questions or comments? So is this what we're gonna send forward or we're gonna put it there? Uh, can we can we finalize on the edit for the um, the current draft just so you know we're all on the same page on um, how we like to see changes? Um, at least sorry to be so bossy today. Uh, is it possible for us to show the uh, version that you shared with us in the beginning of the call and also over email today? Sure, we can pull that up. Yep, that'll be great. So we're on the same page because this is coming from the commission. So we speak in one voice. Um, so the way I'm understanding from Tom, the recommendation will be for instance, under priority one, uh, there are a number of different projects. Maybe we will break the projects into different boxes. And for each project, we will also show a visual. And then we'll have all the text of the information associated with the project in one box. Is that is that what I'm hearing to be the readout of this? Yeah, that, that's what I heard. That uh, to because there's a lot, especially in the first priority. There's a lot of information out there, and I, and I think this one suggestion was to have bullet points. Um, so it's a little easy, a little easier to read. Yeah, I, I don't want to tell you guys how to do it. I, you could, I don't know if you need to list project by project. You could bundle some things together, but yeah, if you say you have like you have different, you have one, two, three. Those could be like bullet points, basically, right? And then we, yeah, and maybe maybe it would be good to have the visual. So the way I'm kind of visualizing it is, let's say for the first box, let's say if we got two projects, then we have two boxes, one box for project one, second box for project two. In, in project one, there will be a visual cue that represents that project. And, um, and, and then I think then we'll have some visuals and for every one of the projects and maybe that breaks it up a little bit. Is that, that, do we have consensus on that? 
I have to say, Tanya, the only concern I have is I've tried adding images to Excel spreadsheets and they it doesn't work very well. So air table. Table. So um, air table. Oh, what, air table something? is what yeah, you're I mean, okay. I think you can yeah. do air table, whatever it is. Um, you yeah. know. Yeah. I still will go back to the PowerPoint idea. I think that might be more visibly pleasing and easier to add information, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Um, but I will ask you the one thought I had, um, it's a little, is the, I know there's a difference between the Artlift Temporary Mural Pilot Project and the Artlift Micro Grants, but I'm wondering if we could, I don't wanna say combine them, but I'm gonna say combine them, um, but just have like, headers or some or under um, subheaders or something like we've done under a micro or uh, art lift program we've done um, you know eight murals 30 performance pieces I'm just making this up um, but that might be um, an interesting way to look at it too and easier just food for thought hey, any other comments or on this uh I guess just one more thing. Um, so uh, Elise, I, I, I think what you gave us was a starting point. Um, and I imagine we have a lot of other examples of projects that fall under every category. Is that, and so we would just be adding to, to like priority one. I don't know how many other projects we're gonna add. Do you need our additional input to that? Um, I think we put in the majority of projects that that fit that okay. particular priority and we okay. uh, veered away from numbering the priorities because we didn't want it to read as these are first priority projects and these are second priority that they're separate, but they're not right. The, the third priority isn't going to fall to the bottom of the totally agree. The yeah, totally agree. No, I, you know, I, I think I put priority one, two, three, just to identify them, but totally agree. We can just, you know, priority ABC or priority, you know, the substance of the priority, that's fine. Um, and then I think we just wanted to break, break out the projects. And I don't know if you need our input on um, additional projects that would fall under each of the priorities or or it, it's really it's your document so um, you have the monthly update with all of the projects so you can take the document whichever direction you wish and when is this document due to council is it the end of the month or end of next month tom i or Mayor Du Bois, did you have? I think the date shifted a bit, if I recall. I don't. I don't recall when it is. Well, it has to be in. The council takes break in July. Is it July that the council goes on break? Like June twenty second. June. Okay, so we'd have to get it in before that, before your break, um, to maybe have approval of it. Or would approval be done after you come back off of break? Yeah, I don't know if, uh, I just don't know what the date is, or if staff's all working to get them all in at a certain date or not. Okay. Well, Cynthia and Ian, I'm happy to take a look when it's time or, you know, or we yeah, can I mean, even, I, I don't even know meet before any then. additional input I can provide, to be honest. I, I, I think I took a, I, I, I took the surgical, you know, knife to the first two versions we had. And, you know, I think uh, where we are right now, it's just a little bit of tinkering and making sure that we have the right projects going under the right, um, you know, priorities. And I think that's about it. And I will say, I think so far from what I've seen, you've done a great job and I'll reiterate what I have to say to myself, less is more. And I think we've done a lot of great things no matter what. So I think whatever we have will be strong. So, so thank you again. Yes, that was a big job, <laughs> figuring out where to put everything. So thank you for organizing that. So do we want to, to modify it a bit more um, with some of the suggestions that have been made? Um, I, we have Ian till May 31st. And then, uh, then he goes off. So 
Um, do we want to have Sinya and Ian work on a little bit more with the suggestions that have been made? And then um, uh, we can send it out for, for everybody to approve and then we'll send it on to council. Here's what that? I would recommend. Okay. Um, I think, uh, Elise, why don't you uh, share this, uh, this document? Um, and, um, you know, I'm happy to go into it and, you know, put in more grids or whatever, uh, if it's helpful. But I think if we just um, have two things, one is access to all the projects we have with the visual. Second is, um, you know, this, this template. And I think everyone can go in and say, hey, here are the 12 projects we looked at. I think these three belong here. You know, pe people can kind of give that input. Um, and I think then, then we would have everyone's input on this project and, you know, this document would, would, uh, would capture everyone's voice. Okay. And we, you know, let's give some de deadlines for when people should go in and kind of look at the library of, hey, here are the projects we looked at. I think number two should belong to this project, or, you know, wh wherever. Um, take a look at it. And then once we have a fairly, give a deadline for when everyone should give input, and then thereafter give a deadline for everyone, when everyone should sign off, and then I think we'll be done with it. Um. Cindy, that seems like a good idea to me, and I, um, I, I know how many stabs you took to trying to figure this out conceptually. And I have to say, the final one that you came up with is to me the one that sort of would most honestly capture, even if it's not the one that's the most easily digestible, because um, it would have the most information. But as Nia says, sometimes less is more. I wonder if we do what you said, if we also um, just should make sure that we just populate each priority according to when it's going to be delivered over the calendar year or years. So it moves along chronologically. And by doing it that way, we can also populate a project across multiple goals or priorities, sorry. Um, so to take an example of just say on the upcoming project on, um, I guess the, the public safety building would still be one that, that's ongoing, right? Even though the, the budget's been um, allocated years past um, from the 1%. Uh, that one could in theory live under two or three of the priorities and we could say it's 2021 to 2022. Um, anything that was just in 2021 would precede that and might live in one or two priorities. So in each priority, you could sort of look and get both a, a progression of the time and the full run out of the projects. Is that, does that sort of work as a way to make it both digestible and make clear how many priorities we're actually serving or is it, is it too complicated to put things in, in multiple priority boxes? I see what you're saying. Um, so visually, the way I was kind of thinking about it is if you have a visual cue for every project um, and you have one project sitting under different priorities, it may be confusing. Okay. So the way, to, the, the way to clean it up may be that you have the picture details about this project and then you have a little box about like, you know, additional benefits or something like that. And, you know, or, or maybe just have that as part of the text. Visual cue, details about this project and say, you know, additional benefits. And maybe details about the project, you can have that bulleted. So visual cue, bullets, you know, name of the project, author, you know, information about this project duration and then additional benefits, you know, this, if when accomplished, this will also. Um, but Shania, sorry, we wouldn't do that for the like micro grants, so right. So I'm wondering if we that's being too specific for most of the projects. I agree. I think that would be. I think it would be. I understand where you're coming from, yeah. and I would totally do the same thing at my first pass. But now I'm thinking maybe is that too ambitious. Um, I think all you have to do is provide examples. So it's not intended to be, this is not a closet organizer. So not everything that we have done needs to fit into this. This is a work plan saying, hey, we have these priorities. Here are some key examples of what we've done under these priorities. So you don't have to try to fix, put everything that's difficult to categorize or allocate into 
one box, you know, because that gets very confusing. Okay. I think I understand. I think maybe it sounds like to me, if you don't mind, you should start oh God. drafting. <laughs> and then I think, because I think you have a lot to say. I think I'm, I think if I see it visually, <laughs> Um, I'm I'll trying so hard, no, honestly. No, I get it. I think it's just, I think we're all thinking the same thing. I think it's just starting it again and just doing it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, uh, uh, Senior, if you're willing to go ahead and do that, the reformatting, um, and then we can move on from that. Because I understand what you're saying, but to actually see it, I, I think is a different. Okay, uh, so what I'll do is I will take what Elise has given, I will modify the templates. I'll give some examples, but what I need is for you guys to go in once the template is done, to go in, take a look at the library of stuff we've done, give some input. And if you don't have time, we'll give you, you a date for when to give an input on which projects belong where. Okay. And then, once everyone has a chance to make an input, let's again have a deadline for when everyone signs off on that. Okay. Can we do that? Yeah, I think that's a good plan. And then we also need the further deadline and one needs to go to council. So, all right, so let's do that. Okay, thank you everyone for your input. And again, uh, Sinya and Ian, thank you for your, for your work on this work plan. And Mr. Mayor, thank you for your input on this. And uh, we'll expect to see this tomorrow morning by 8 a.m., Senya. Sure. <laughs> so um, we'll get that out in the next week, I imagine. Um, nice. I'll work with Elise on the timeline. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, thanks. All right, thank you all. There's a good discussion. Now the update on the King Plaza artwork focused on equity and Elise. So I don't have a whole lot to share, unfortunately. Um, we've been a little busy with some of these other projects, but we have started to draft the call and think through some of the logistics of how we want the application process to go, what we want in the letter of interest, um, what kind of artists or, or artist teams we might want to target. So it may be that it's an artist paired with someone who is may come from more of a social background or is more skilled in community outreach. So um, trying to make it as open as possible for creative teams to apply as well. Um, so I do not think we're gonna be able to have this out and, and feel secure that it's right um, by June 1st, but I am hopeful we will have it released by the time uh, the next commission meeting takes place. We are also still struggling a bit with what to name this residency or temporary public art program. Um, you know, we've got feedback from the commissioners about wanting to keep the King name in there. We will certainly have language about King Plaza and how it was so named and that this, um, this project is meant to sort of honor that, that spirit. Um, but it gets a little unwieldy with naming. So if anyone has any suggestions, we could really use them. <laughs> yeah, I've been thinking actually a lot about it recently. And I will say one word that I've been thinking a lot about is the word conversation mm -hmm. um, or conversations, which is what the HRC has been using. Um, so I think maybe conversations are even on King Plaza or something to that effect. But I, I think that word is a very strong, impactful phrase. Mm -hmm. Hey, any other comments on this? Uh, so we want to put on our thinking caps and come up with some sort of a name, uh, short and snappy. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to have 98 words in it. So, okay. Any other comments or questions on this? Yes, Ben, one other. Um, so Tom, you mentioned um, the sister city. Um, it's not really a plaque, but um, peace. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, so I guess, you know, I'm wondering if that's something that is going to be a, if we end up going in that direction, I think it's an interesting concept. Um, and I'm wondering if it would be part of this larger, I'm going to use the word conversation, I apologize, um, but residency, or should it be separate? 
Um, Cause I think that could be an interesting kind of initiative as part of the project program residency. Um, so I was just curious if we wanted to talk about it now or put it on the back burner or, or what have you. I, I think it could be, I think, I think neighbors abroad uh, would be interested and they might have some money. I'm not, I'm, you know, they have, uh, they have their own funds. So it could be part of the conversation. Good, good, thank you. Any other questions or comments? And now into announcement. First of all, I wanna say it's been an honor and privilege working with all of you on the commission. So thank you very much, a lot of hard work. And Elise and Nadia, especially thank you. Uh, without you, this commission wouldn't be here. So thank you all for your hard work. So thank you very much. Um, and Ian, this is your last meeting. We're gonna hate to see you go. We've had a lot of good comments and input and uh, the voice of reason at times. So thank you very much. And any other commissioners have any comments for Ian? Uh, yeah, I did have one comment, which I share with Elise. Um, you know, our, our commission has been reduced in size, and this is not particular to our commission, but it's not unique to our commission, but it certainly has impacted the, um, the pool of uh, this, this, this commission. And so my recommendation to Elise, which I share with Ian is, if it's possible for us to create some type of, you know, maybe advisory panel, or something to retain um, the knowledge and the interests and the participation and input uh, from uh, good commissioners uh, like Ian, that will be really helpful. Thank you, Sunya. And I've seen that done in other commissions as well, where outgoing commissioners were part of an advisory panel to the commission. They were ex officio, but they were members of the commission and could uh, provide input. So thank you for that suggestion. Any other comments uh, for Ian? Ian, just thank you so much. You were such a great help and very good at wordsmithing and always such a intellect. And I really appreciate that. We will really miss you. And um, yeah, if we can give you ex officio and have you attend the meetings, that would be so great. So thank you. And I'll also, um, First, I guess you would not first it, but second and third, um, the congratulatory thank yous, um, Ian, you've been superb. Um, and it's been really nice um, having a really just strong team of commissioners. Um, it's been an influx. It was an influx for a little bit of time and people laughed and um, people joined. And I think we were really having good momentum and I know it's not gonna end um, and you'll be with us no matter what. And uh, Join us for public comments. We'd love to hear your voice. <laughs> okay, three, three minutes at the beginning of every meeting. Uh, yeah, yeah, you will hear more from me. I've, I've told people you. <laughs> um, uh, I shared this picture uh, with Elise and Nadia and asked them to put them up. That's my daughter. And of course, uh, that's one of the temporary murals. Neither of uh, those, uh, neither that person nor that piece of art were around when I started on the commission. Um, <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and, and you said that sort of we're all uh, chairs and my chairs, that's true and not true. I definitely was neither when I came on nor where my exiting is one, but um, I was able to grow immensely uh, with you all as colleagues uh, under Ben's leadership and Lauren's leadership over the last couple of years too, and learning from Nia and Sinya um, and just the tremendous, tremendous work that Elise um, and Nadia do. Um, so, uh, and, and all the, the, the staff of the city for that matter who support us from other, other parts of the, of the city staff. Um, so thank you for, for guiding me through the first couple of years when I was learning and uh, for what I think was a, was a really strong last year. I'm, I'm grateful for the collegiality and, uh, and the partnership. And I think we got some good work done and it was fun uh, as I think this, this picture shows. Uh, my daughter goes to, to Max for news and Bells to look at books. And then one day this was there because of support from the city and the work we did. Um, and so I'm very grateful for it. Thank you, Ian, and we wish you all the best in your future endeavor. So thank you all very much. And if I may uh, just jump in from the staff standpoint, sure. Commissioner Klaus, you will definitely be missed. And um, you've been a pleasure to work with. And thank you for all of your thoughtful insight and, um, and inquiry. Great, thank you, Elise. And uh, Nia and Lauren, 
I wish you all the best moving forward in your roles as chair and vice chair. And I know that there'll be some really wonderful things coming up. Mr. Mayor, thank you for attending and thank you for your input tonight. And the next meeting is gonna be June 17th, Thursday, June 17th. So we'll see you there and thank you all for attending and the meeting is now adjourned. So thank you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.